What's up YouTube, it's Nico here. I'm here to show off uh, my latest uh, project, um, which happens to be a combination lock. Um, now, I had been wanting to make a combination lock because I have an idea for an adventure map and um, then I decided to turn it into more of a pattern lock, which is still a combination. Um, but I wanted it to be visually apparent, you know, um, throughout the map. So basically, you find this or something that would look like this, and you would need to find the pattern throughout the map. Um, this was my idea. One being, there's certain columns, um, you know, say there's a yellow section of the map. So when you go to the yellow section of the map, uh, you'll eventually run into a column of lights, and that would indicate this is the pattern for this particular lock. Uh, the blue being in the blue section, green and you know red being in their own sections. So you have to go to each section to get the correct pattern. Um, as you can see, uh, the door does not open because that is not the correct pattern or combination. Um, this here is the actual correct combination currently. Now the inherent problem with uh, the combination lock and locks in general with you know no key or anything like that is once that information is out there it's out there so you don't necessarily have to do the adventure or the puzzles or anything like that you can just look it up and you know also once you've done the adventure you already know the combination so you know what's to keep you from just going back in there um, that led me to make the uh, next step um, which is basically randomizing the pattern um, so I went ahead and designed this system which in foresight uh, or hindsight excuse me um, should have been going out that way but there was water so I built it on this side so technically I should have turned this around and faced it the other way anyhow uh, that's not the point um, I wanted to make it to where it was random and it randomly generates a code upon activating a uh, pressure plate. So once you start the adventure map and you know you force somebody down a the hallway, uh, they step on a pressure plate, and that pressure plate then randomly generates the code, and it is unique to that current game. Um, no one knows it. You can't look it up on the internet. It is completely unique to yours, and that's what I've done with this combination lock so it's actually a combination lock plus a randomly generated code for that particular match I would say um, you can set up in multiple ways uh, just to demonstrate real quick uh, if I it is currently working if I change any of these it will not work so it does work as a combination lock um, I guess I will demonstrate how the combination uh, part works. Let me reset these here. These are the, I guess, tumblers is what they would be considered. So they are currently reset and there is no combination that will ever open this log. It is currently unopenable. Uh, even though this combination is displayed, it does not currently work because the tumblers are not engaged. So what would happen is, like I said, you would step over a pressure plate. Once you step over the pressure plate, it is going to randomly activate um, or randomly generate a code, which we'll see these here uh, show. And it is going to physically move these tumblers to create the lock. So this is now the pattern that activates this lock. That old pattern will not work. It is now this pattern and 
this pattern only that will work um, basically uh, there are five sections to this setup um, lock plus the randomizer uh, there would be this here which is the physical movement of the display um, this allows you to press one button to continuously move and wrap around each column um, you need four of these boards uh, or you need a board per column you could expand this so you could have you know five columns um, also if you wanted to add another row so make this a five you would actually extend this part here you know you'd actually add more of the uh, gold panels it doesn't have to be gold of course um, and you just add in more toggle switches counters and you know all that good stuff so you can expand this infinitely um, mm. depends on how much work you want to put in so that would be one section and this is the uh, interface user interface is what I would consider that uh, this here would be a section um, this would be the randomizer plus the uh, uh, we'll, we'll call this the data section and basically what it is is a randomizer that is then converted into data um, these here would be the displays you know this yellow segment here would be in the yellow part of the adventure map this would be in the blue part green part you know and as you finish each of those you would get that you know you would see this signal telling you what to go it wouldn't be right here by this uh, it would be strung out with a bundle cable to the, its pro appropriate section you know so you could see it um, when you wanted them to see it uh, I just have it right here next to it just because I didn't feel like running wire everywhere. Um, this here is the physical count of the data that's generated. So this turns from information to a physical action with this here. Uh, these are physical counters that turn it into a pulse. Uh, I guess this would take the raw data and turn it into an electrical impulse actually and then the physical representation would be done through these tumblers which are basically you know frames with the correct uh, color combinations on them and uh, this last part here is to keep it from uh, initializing as soon as you get into the map so that way uh, once you activate the button I'll explain that here in a minute but that's the general idea of it um, basically once these tumblers move in place they connect to AND gates um, which you know set a condition white and orange equal this which go back to whatever you're wanting to have them open or activate with the redstone signal you know this is pretty much basic blank and blank equal lime green so it's actually 5000 4099 and pink which is the button uh, to open the door equal green if all those are met only if all those are met and um, I guess we'll start here um, first thing I'm going to note is I'm going to break this I'm going to break this and I'm going to go ahead and reset this why we are here. So I'm resetting the tumblers. But what I want to note is this wouldn't be a button. I mean it could be a button. You could have it as a button but I would have it as a uh, pressure plate. So when somebody walks over it uh, that's what begins it. Um, I've disconnected this part here which actually engages these. Um, and we'll do that in a minute. I just want to show that this is a randomly generated sequence. As you can see we're only looking at the colored light lamps. There are some other lamps. Those are my old lamps but 
uh, that was for me in debugging they're not necessary but so as you can see this currently randomly generates uh, one through four being white orange magenta and light blue and with this system here it has to have one of these um, each column has to have one lit um, you know and that's the only way to make it work so it's randomly generating a one through four and it's actually technically zero through three but you know for the sake of being easy we're just gonna call it a one through four and that's randomly generated every time you know it could randomly generate the same combination in a row you know that is quite possible um, so what is happening in here is uh, first of all this is a randomizer um, they currently I think it's my texture pack this is correct and it's incorrect um, these red lines that are lit up that are coming off the randomizers those are incorrect um, what is correct however are these lights and this randomizer the yellows are on and red is off so this black is actually on and this red is actually on uh, this one here even though it's showing a red line here it is not on even though it this light is saying that it's off so it is actually off even though this light is wrong and that's one thing to keep in mind because some of these are you know broken uh, these are actually this one's displaying correctly and this one isn't again this light is off even though it's on but that's just that's just a current you know keep in mind so if something looks wonky to you uh, that's what's going on here um, what we needed to do here was turn randomized on and offs to one, two, three, and four. And the way we're going to do that is with AND gates and NOR gates. Um, so we're not using this middle one, it's not connected to anything. We're only using the top two in all of these. And it generates every time it gets a pulse it generates uh, random on and offs for each of the three signals so it has two signals per or I should I guess I should say it has two outcomes per output being on or off so this has on and off this has on and off this has on and off and you want to turn this data into a one, two, three, and four. And you need two signals, you need two outputs to get four because you have on, off, which is one, two, and then you have on, off, which would be three, four. And how you would do this is. Um, this isn't exactly how I have it set up, but just to give you a general idea, both of them off would be zero. Both of them on would be one. Black, which is this side, on, and red off would be two red on black off would be three so you would technically have a zero one two and three or for better usage one two three and four and that is where we are getting our four numbers so with it getting a random pulse it has to be one of those you know it can't not be and that's what we need we need a definite one two three or four um, and you do that with NOR gates and AND gates 
or a combination of both. Currently we have a orange signal um, which is indicated through this wire here and that is giving us a uh, second light which is this one here and if we look at it it's an AND gate and an AND gate you know requires blank and blank well an AND gate normally has three signals I have deactivated the middle one with a screwdriver um, you can do that for most logic gates you can either swap them out or deactivate stuff so uh, get to know your logic gates um, and that's how this is currently working so this yellow lights on this yellow lights on so black and red are on which goes here and as you can see black and red come to the AND gate and that equals on which we turn this black and red signal to a orange signal if I have it broken if we go to this one here it is the blue signal light blue and if we look at it what is light blue state so light blue has a AND gate and a NOR gate and if you look at it so it is saying that if black is on so we got the AND here which black is on and this here is active which it is which is a NOR gate so it's actually the opposite so if black and red is off equal light blue so we have turned this being not on to a on by NORing it so it is not on so we are telling this AND gate that this one is not on so black on with red off equals light blue this one up here is saying the opposite which is red on and black off we get a magenta uh, and the top one is just a NOR gate by itself and it states that if red is off and black is off you're white so with the randomizers we have now generated a color code and we have given them uh, from on and offs to a actual data and information that we can now work with um, at the same time that random code is represented visually uh, on these displays which again would be in their appropriate segments throughout the adventure map now um, I'm going to place this back here uh, the uh, problem I had was every time you would load up the map it would just take the last information which would be this so like say you know I logged off and I had this reset you know and I log back on well this information is already here and it's present and as soon as you log in uh, that information would shoot through these cables and it would activate the counters which would do every time and we don't want it we want it to be you know fresh and new so you know I don't want that information I want the next information and what you have to do is uh, allow this to calculate all the random data and once it's done then allow it to send through I mean it's gonna try it's trying to send through right now but it has nowhere to send you know that data can't go anywhere because this cable is broken so whenever I activate this here there is a delay that goes through and that delay uh, basically is an after fact so the randomly generated information uh, gets generated you know a few seconds before 
this uh, repeater kicks in and kicks it in. So the, once the information is generated, uh, it, the new information is generated, then it connects and it allows it to move on to this part. Um, I, you know, didn't want it to stay there, so what I did was add a stealthate to over here, so, you know, a few seconds after it, you know, the stealthate kind of works like a repeater. Um, it's pretty much, you know, very similar, but it has a few more things, but I'm using it for basically the same thing as a repeater. So after that information, you know, is generated, this connects to it, it sends its information, well, this just pulls it back so it doesn't stay. So that way I can, you know, just instantly reset it, but I got to reset the tumblers every time, which, you know, you can do that with another step, which we'll get to. So now we have this new raw data and we want to set a physical number to this raw data. Right now we have set this pattern to a light blue and we need to turn that into a number. And so this information you know has been shared here and it goes up and it gets shot out here because that is the same color. And this turns it into a actual counting number. These are counters. Um, this one is one, two, three, and four. So this is where we actually get a physical number from our data and it's going to allow us to do you know the pulses. Uh, these timers are all set so if it gets a white signal it's only going to count to one. It's going to deactivate this timer and it's going to start counting down and once it gets to one it you know shuts off. Sorry my mouse is giving me problems. It's going to shut off because this timer is also, you know, deactivating them. Uh, so it kind of loops around. Uh, this one will only count to two, three, and four. And all that information is shared here, and it can only go one way, which is up, and it goes to 1000, which happens to be connected to this motor here, which moves up. So as you can see, um, this is the fourth one, the bottom one. So it got a blue which went all the way through here, which went to the counter, it gave it four pulses, it came up through here, and it activated this motor four times, which moved this whole thing four, which we started here, this is zero, one, two, three, four. So it has now said that for this AND gate to work, this bundled cable needs a light blue signal and this is going to go to the lock but this bundled cable actually if we follow it all the way back here comes to this board and this board is controlling the yellow which matches that so whatever I do on this board you know, changes this activated color, which is white, uh, orange, magenta, light blue, you know, so white, orange, magenta, light blue, and activates it. So right now white is lit, um, and that's not the current one, so it can't go through here. This this is not lit, this is not unlit, you know, so that information isn't going through. If we move it down one more, that is going to light up. Bam. It now says, hey, you know what, light blue is lit up over there. So this part of the and conditional, light blue and pink or magenta, so this has been met for its you know condition now we gotta match the next one which is the blue one we need to go up one so now this 
condition has been met. So we got light blue and magenta, which gives us a go equal 5,000 on. So that is how that works. Um, 5,000 on has flipped this part of the AND gate on on this part. Uh, and it's still waiting for the other two conditions to be met, which is the last two combinations and a signal to open up the door. Um, this here is basically a way to singly press one button and move a column of lights. Um, and how this works is let me let me reset this one all the way to the top let me get it to four so I can explain it a little better okay so this here is where that button is at every time it gets a signal it comes in here and it goes into this bundled cable uh, but it's only transferring a black signal. It's not tra transferring anything else. And when you press it, you are giving it a signal. Well, the black is only connected to counters. And so this counter here is set to 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when you press it one time, this counter has then got a plus 1. They all get plus 1s, actually. So plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. The plus one for this counter is then completed because it has a maximum count of one. And it also has a decrement and all of them are in increments of one. So when we do a plus one, it's going to flip this here and it's going to give a blue signal. This blue signal is going to go up and it's going to find everything on this bundled cable to activate for blue. And the only thing that it's going to find is this toggle latch. So it's going to flip this toggle latch. So now this toggle latch will be on, which tells this blue signal to flip everything that's on this bundled cable to blue. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to go up and it's going to find the closest thing which is this blue signal. So we are now going to get this on. But at the same time, it's going to go over here, and it's going to flip this here, which is actually a pulser, and it's going to flip this toggle latch, which does two things. One, it's going to flip uh, this white one here, but it's also going to flip this red. And that's what it wants to do right now, what we want to do. And when we flip this red one, it's going to flip all these. And it's going to reset the timers back. And I'm going to de demonstrate this for a second. Let's see. Okay, so blue has now one. It's got one press, and it's now flipped. So as you can see, all these timers have moved a little bit. This one has completed its cycle because it has a maximum count of one. It's gone, it's turned on that slight. At the same time, it flipped this toggle switch, which uh, flipped a uh, white and so forth. Yeah. If I do it one more time, this one is going to come on. Magenta is going to come on. It's going to come up here. Magenta is going to do two things. One, it's going to send a cable, send send a signal to this, and at the same time, it's going to send a signal here. That's going to flip blue off. But this counter is going to stay lit, so it's not losing its count yet. It is keeping its count. Magenta is lit. Uh, this one moved up one. This one moved up one, but they're not lit yet. But it has deactivated the blue light, even though the count has stayed the same. Again, 
so on this one again what it's going to do is this orange light's going to be lit it's going to deactivate the magenta light orange came up got lit orange is on now and magenta is turned off now this here is where it changes a little bit once this one gets lit so we're gonna get a white signal the white signal is gonna go up it's gonna flip here and it's gonna do both of them it is gonna reset the uh, all the counters back to zero and it is gonna flip this one off so let's do that all the counters have been reset back to zero this stays on and it is working as planned it can now start over from the very beginning which would be one button press activates this one and it just keep, keeps repeating itself and all these are exactly the same and again all this does is allow me to use one button to change what light is being lit in a column anyhow uh, I don't think that was too long too bad um, I think I explained it pretty well. Uh, if y'all have any questions, let me know. Uh, I am currently trying to design some ideas to make a pretty huge adventure map, and this will definitely be implemented in it. Um, I guess while I'm here, I'll go ahead and you know just show this off and what this is. This is a new gambling machine I'm making. Uh, it will probably not ever run anywhere because I'm just not happy with it and what this does is I press a button and it switches to that and you would think that this is similar to that but it's not it's completely different you know layout and what this whole idea was was you pick your uh, color then you gamble and it randomly generates a number up to the top four and if you got it right if yours match then you win um, there's a few things different about this gambling machine than my other ones one this one keeps track of how much you pay so if you put in three coins it actually has a counter that you know would keep track of that three coins and then it multiplies that three by something else but we'll get in that to a, a whole nother section anyhow um, if you like it like it please share it with people if you do like it um, and uh, hopefully I will have an adventure map out fairly soon for everybody I need to play it with um, well I say soon but it's still a ways away so don't 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 hold your breath. <laughs> It'll be out eventually. Thanks, guys. This is Nico77025.